Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to another book review. Unfortunately, it is yet, an I know two this week, I apologize, but sometimes that's just how the cookie crumbles. Uh, this is another negative review, just to tell you straight off. Uh, Neverworld Wake by Marisha Passell. This hurts my heart to say. One of my favorite books, my number three spot for my favorite novels of all time is uh, Night Film by, by Marisha Passell. Um, I really love Special Topics in Calamity Physics also, which was her first book. This one, I have no idea what happened here. Um, it almost feels like, being a Stephen King fan, um, who, someone who has read his share of trunk novels, because Stephen King will tell you in, like, in Blaze, he tells you right off the bat that this is a trunk novel, you're not getting something new. Um, this feels like a trunk novel. This feels like something that it was packed away that the author didn't have any faith in because it didn't go anywhere and didn't have anything else to publish so they threw it out there. Um, now I'm not saying that's the case. Uh, I'm not really trying to disrespect her because she's an amazing author. The problem here is this book goes absolutely nowhere. There is nothing interesting that happens in this book. Um, if you go into the synopsis, which I read before and after, I don't usually, but I want to know what I was getting into. Um, it does say that there's, uh, there is something, you know, supernatural, something fantastic that happens to the, to the, uh, young adults in this book. And right off the bat, this book isn't bad because it's young adult. I didn't, I didn't care for anything about this book, and it had absolutely nothing to do with the young adult aspect. The problem was... The characters are so empty and vacuous, they're just, but they're, it's not in a villainous way. There's just nothing interesting about them. And I thought to, to one extent, I mean, this book felt like uh, the author was just checking off an inc inclusivity checklist. Because there's a gay character in here, but the only reason we know he's gay is because she tells us flat out, this person is gay and moving on. And that's it. It's like, okay, so you checked off that box, let's keep moving. There's a nerdy character in here. Is it everything that you will find in your typical, you know, like, basically what you're dealing with here is Sco this cast of Scooby-Doo is what you're dealing with. Um, uh, to, to a T, <laughs> uh, now that I think about it, and I think about it even more after I wrote my review, it feels like they should all have gotten in the mystery van and driven off. Um, but the problem is, the focus of this book is a... Maybe somebody that committed suicide didn't actually commit suicide kind of deal. Um, but that wasn't the focus that I was looking for. It's called Never World Wake, not the possible murder of so-and-so. Um, and Never World Wake, it, the, the Never World Wake, it's a, it's a place kind of, a reality, an alternate reality, is just our reality that just keeps on happening over and over again. It's Groundhog Day, or that Tom Cruise sci-fi movie. It's been done so many times over and over again, and she does absolutely nothing new with it until the end. But in the middle of this, they bring up a book called The Dark House of Elsewhere Bend. First off, that's an amazing title. I'd read, I'd read the hell out of that book. Um, in, in this book, it says that that book is 1,394 pages. This book is 324 pages. It's also about half as long as both of her other books. Um, and it feels that way too with the character development and the story and the plot progression and everything. It just feels rushed and, you know, slapped together. But with, with this one, the book in the, the, the book inside the book, The Dark House of Elsewhere Bend, that's what I signed up for. That's the, the crazy weirdness that I signed up for, especially in, like in books like Night Film, she does the same kind of thing where she, she dumps into this whole fictional world, jumps, not dumps, she jumps into this whole fictional world and she owns it. Um, like the, all the Stanislaus Cordova stuff, um, if you read that, I don't want to give you any spoilers, we're talking about this book. But with this one, she doesn't, she doesn't commit it's like they, well, it's not like, they use this book as an instruction manual, and this really super cool concept becomes a plot device, instead of actually being the story. Um, and of course, at the end of the book, the person that everybody, everybody who reads this is going to know who, who gets voted for. There's not a spoiler, everybody who reads this is, knows how this is going to end. 
Um, and then at the end, you get a super brief glimpse of that crazy, wacky, not wacky, sorry, that, that otherworldly type of thing. You get a brief glimpse of it, just a, about 30 pages of it, and then it's over. Um, so yeah, I waited five years. Night, Fils Night Film came out in 2013. I waited five years for this book. And I'm actually upset. If you read my Goodreads review, that's a little more passionately upset than I am now. Because I got, I was able to get out, and the link's down there in the doobly-doo. I was able to get all that out in the writing of it. But I'm really, I'm really pretty pissed off about it. Um, especially since I, I made a case of it to just scream on Twitter about how excited I was about it. I pre-ordered it. I jumped through all the hoops trying to get every, you know, putting putting myself out there going, I can't wait for this book, just to get this crap. Anyways, so, uh, if you've read it, let me know down there, um, and if you have a differing opinion than me, please explain your differing opinion, and please don't go, oh my god, I loved it, tell me why you loved it, okay? So until next time, I have been E, you have been you, this has been another book review, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye!